the whole process of growth from stage to stage has been ordained by God, right? So when arrested development takes place, something interferes, something sabotages that growth process in our life. And so this is what, what, what happens. I saw your upon the Lord. for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, we're going to begin at um, verse 9. <clears throat> well, we know in part and we prophesy in part. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And together, and now, and now abided I faith, faith, hope, hope charity, charity, these three. But the, but greatest the greatest of these is, is charity. charity. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. And we are anticipating your help again today. And the move that comes from you. Your Holy Spirit, we ask that you'll have freedom and free course. Lord, not only while the word is going forth, but after the word is going forth, that you will minister the clarity, the help that comes only from you. We acknowledge your presence. You are good. And you're good all the time. And Father, I ask the Lord God that your people, that we all may be receptive to the things that you're sharing with us now. And open wide our spirits to be touched by God again and be strengthened and healed. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Today I'm going to be talking about arrested development. This is what the Lord brought to me again. Today we've talked some in the past about it. Um, but there's more in that area of healing that God wants to do or deliverance. Arrested development. Um, we've been talking... On last Sunday about breaking curses, uh, those ancestral curses that were passed down not only through the bloodline but through the iniquities of the fathers, the sins of the fathers. And when we come to Christ, God, it's his delight and desire to break those curses from off of our lives because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. So the Father, the plan was in the Father's heart to redeem man, and then His Son carried out the redemptive part uh, of giving His life as a ransom for the sins of humanity. He died and was buried and rose again, ascended unto heaven, and took His role as high priest. And the Holy Spirit's role now is to enable us to bring healing and wholeness and to execute the will of God 
and the blessings of redemption. So we, uh, in the age of the Holy Spirit really moving, it's been there for a while, years, but uh, even so in the latter days, the Holy Spirit is working so wonderful. And uh, we talked uh, not only about breaking curses just on last week, but we talked about peace, uh, God giving peace, God wanting and desires to give, desiring to give peace to his people. There. He doesn't want our hearts stressed out, worried, frustrated, disturbed without peace. He wants us to have peace. So we talked about peace. We talked about love, perfecting our love. God's love and God wants our love perfected and growing in understanding and knowledge and wisdom that we can make uh, good and wise choices to cut down or cut off, cut down, I say, a lot on offenses, you know, our offending and others uh, offending us. So as love grows and knowledge and understanding, uh, these things, uh, there'll be less offenses uh, that we will cause or less offenses, offenses that we find ourselves being offended by things that uh, may happen to us. And uh, so we talked about the Holy Spirit again in Galatians, how God has said, you know, we've begun in the Spirit, we must continue in the Spirit to accomplish, for God to accomplish everything that he's planned and purposed to do. And uh, so that's just a little uh, review. God is, God is a great God. And he uh, told us that this is the appointed time and the hour that uh, of our visitation from God and uh, I don't know about you but I, I, my, my spirit is open to the visitation of God and is not limited to when we come here isn't that right we have to be limited it's not limited but we want to take the limits off God every day of our lives God is moving by his spirit and we just left down home our down Greensboro my wife and I and Jessica and where we had a gathering with our family members and God used us to share some truths about healing and some healing took place. But wherever we find ourselves, we must be open and ready for the Lord to minister to and through us. For this is the appointed time. Hallelujah. And God makes all things beautiful in his time. Praise God. So remember not the former things. God is doing a new thing. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, shall you not know it? Now it shall spring forth. And it's springing forth. And we're thankful to the Lord. So arrested development. It's just basically what it sounds like. Development interrupted. Development stopped. And so I read this passage. He put this, brought this scripture to mind. Verse 11. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So here Paul was pointing out, uh, he used that natural to understand the spiritual things. And he was talking about love and the spiritual gifts. That was uh, going back from chapter 12, talking about the... the, the superiority of love and so but verse 11 in this process he was sharing uh, about the natural process of uh, from childhood to adulthood and he said when I was a child I spake as a child and I understood as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man, I put away childish things. He put it away because he grew to maturity, right? And as he grew to maturity, things changed. The knowledge that he had, the perceptions, the understanding, the ability to grasp and perceive and sort out and make right, wise decisions based on the good, clear understanding began to grow as he began to grow and ascertain certain things. So, uh, um, and so the Lord dropped the scripture in my mind when he was, I was asking him to, should I continue talking about the breaking of the generational curses? And he pretty much witnessed to that, but uh, a little something in this manner, he said, arrested 
development. And we talked in the past, for those that may have not heard it, or those that by way of television have heard, not heard, arrested development is um, when emotional development remains at the stage and age of the traumatic experience. Can I say it again? When arrested development is when emotional development remains at the stage and age of the traumatic experience or the experience that one may have had in their life. Uh, there's so many uh, experiences that, traumatic experiences that can happen. Some of the major ones as we've talked before, rejection, abuse, abandonment, um, incest, and uh, but there are many traumatic experiences that one can have in life. And since the fall of man, sin came, and death came by way of sin, which brought a lot of evil into the world. Satan became the prince of this world. And naturally, when he uh, was able to have his way in many people's lives, then a lot of damage and evil and pain was brought to humanity. But when Christ died, he died to restore all things. And he's a great God of restoration. He restored the authority, the dominion given to humanity through Christ. And he broke the power of sin. And he delivered us from being stuck in that judgment, death. And now death is but a freeway to bring us into the place of in the presence of God. So arrested development takes place, of course. Uh, it's taken place in many lives. Um, when a person has a trauma, whether it be early death of a loved one, the loss of a key job that was going to land them to success, uh, it could, the stock market crashed, uh, uh, some abuse or trauma ex uh, experience, uh, tsunamis, uh, wars, just the list goes on of traumatic experiences. And we're in a time uh, of healing where God wants to mend and make whole people's lives in every race, creed, and color. And so he's given us the message of reconciliation, restoration, and healing. And to the best of our understanding, we are attempting to do that. And so he wants us to talk about this arrested development. That means a person may, uh, can become an adult in size or stature and not be an adult emotionally. That they can be emotionally stuck in, at the age, whether 12 or 13, 15, or 10 or 11 or 9, where they had that trauma. And you've seen people, and you see people all the time, where you say, that was such a childish act. I can't believe they operated like that. There are purposes why people do that. And um, so um, there, there's selfish acts that people commit. And, you know, you may not be that way, and you say, wow, man, I, I don't understand why. How people can do this, you know? They're supposed to be an adult at that, you know? And, uh, well, somewhere or another, there were experiences in their lives. And for whatever reason, they did not forgive. So they did not begin to grow. They couldn't apply the Word of God to help them to grow and to give them another understanding or greater understanding of truth the way life is supposed to be and the way God intended for things to be and so they became stuck at that traumatic experience 
uh, and left with what is known as unresolved conflicts. And when conflicts are not resolved, especially in light of the word of God and truth, then a person uh, are left at that stage of development uh, emotionally. And God is a good God wanting and has been doing healing people from root causes and emotional traumas and, and allowing through the word of God us to hear truth. Not like our perception, but truth, right? And the word of God is truth. And God, God gives us his word, how things are to be, how God is, and how he sees us, and all of those things. But you know, as well as I know, sometimes if we are not uh, ab uh, 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 diligent students of the word, we may not grasp what God intends for us to grasp and have and experience the transformation that can come by the word of God. Are you understanding? And so God, although he gives us that, and some do, but I'm saying as a whole now, God gives us his word for us to live by. How many know that we were born again by the word of God? So since we were born of the spirit, born and because the word is spirit, born by the word of God, it takes the word of God, the truth of God, were to sustain us, right? And the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So now if I am a, if I am a spiritual man and does not understand that I am sustained by God and by God's word, then I may end up becoming... Uh, lacking in my spiritual growth and maturity, right? So God wants us now because we've been born in spirit and Peter says, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may do what? Grow thereby. So it is evident that the word we're growing, we grow by the living word of God. And another scripture in Hebrew says, the word of God is living or alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sun of soul and spirit and of joints and marrows, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So when I read the word of God, if I'm prayerfully reading it and desiring to know truth in God and for him to shine the light in my soul and help me, and healed, then I can read this word prayerfully, meditatively, and God's word, the entrance of his word, will do what? Give light. And so the word is truth, and it's a light to my pathway, and it's a lamp to my feet. And uh, so the word of God is, remember now, we were born again by the word, and it's the word of God that sustains the universe now, right? By the word. He upholds all things by the word of his power. And God spoke and he said, live to Israel. When Israel was in a dead state, bleeding and dying, he said. And then he said, but I passed by you. I spread my skirt over you. And then he said, I said, live. And Israel began to live. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the word of God is so powerful. And, and, and God can speak his word. And that word carrying the life and power of the almighty God has creative power. It can create things. And so uh, we're sustained by God's word. And um, so uh, when the, uh, unresolved conflicts, um, conflicts occur, when a child focuses, or a child, um, how do I do this? When a child faces traumas, and other experiences, sometimes they never resolve them through forgiveness, growth, or maturity. But they may remain stuck at a situation that happened years ago. And as a result, become set in their ways. But thanks be to God. Look at somebody say, thanks be to God. We have help from God. So we are not without hope. God changes us. 
and I'm excited about God changing us. Uh, and he is so good, and, and he is so intent on making us better people. Hallelujah. He wants that more than we want it. So I can't say, oh, I wish God would just be merciful to me and show me because I know God wants it more than we do. He cares because the Bible says, he that has begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Christ. So we have that going for us. God is on our side. So let me see if I can give an example, a couple of examples of this arrested development, how it works. Um, let me take my own life. I remember as God was recently talking to me about it, I said, okay, Lord, I'm, I know a little bit about it based on what I've read and this kind of thing, but I want you to walk me through uh, this humiliating experience that I had during my childhood, nine or ten years old. I, I think I've shared it, but the bottom, this one particular word, I was humiliated by the teacher in the fourth grade. Did I share this with this body? All right, so, um, and so I asked him, I said, I want you to teach me through my own experience and I can better understand it. I said, what took place in my life when I faced this trauma? And uh, we were riding down to a Greensboro on Friday. And so I spent on the road, it takes about three and a half hours from where we live. So the whole while I focused in on traumas and the Lord walking me through what took place in my life. And uh, so here's some of the things that God said. He said, when this lady openly embarrassed this little nine or ten year old boy, she said, he said, damaged emotions occurred. He said, fear occurred. He said feelings of defectiveness occurred. Rejection occurred. It brought anger, right? And then he said a need for affirmation. Now keep in mind, when, when this happened to the little child, the child, I'm taking you back to Corinthians 13 now, when a person is a child, they think, as a child. Are you with me? They speak as a child. Their understanding is a childish, childish. They do not have the capacity to think and reason and process information like a child, like, like an adult, right? So that's why I read that scripture and God brought it to me. He said, Paul said, when I was a child, basically saying that, you know, that certain things come through time and maturity. God develops our brains. He develops our understanding through knowledge and wisdom. The whole process of growth from stage to stage has been ordained by God, right? So when arrested development takes place, something interferes, something sabotages that growth process in our lives. And so this is what, what, what happened. So he told me, uh, as I spent those three hours just talking to God and ride, driving, and uh, one after another, one thing after another, he was talking to me. So damaged emotions occurred. Fear, now what happens to damaged emotions? When emotions are damaged, you become extremely sensitive. Right? I'm walking you through this because I, you can relate to your own life certain things. So when your emotions are damaged, you're extremely sensitive and you may get angry and kind of go off. And even as an adult, you may go off and fly off the handle, right? Because emotions need healing. So, and I would think what happened to me, and I remember uh, shortly around that same time, uh, my mother was whipping me, and I shared that with you, right? But I'm tying it in. And I was like 9 or 10, I can't remember the exact age. And the thing about my mom was, bless her soul, she's a good woman. But when she whipped you, you must cry. It was just that simple. So, and, and I knew that about mom, and so this was a time for me to be whipped. So she was whipping me, and 
for the life of me. I'm understanding it better now because I think he was tying in the trauma and the anger and the rage that set in when I had that trauma. Because I used to say, I don't know where it came from, but I believe that's what he was saying. It started there when I was humiliated so bad in that class. And the woman, the way she treated me was like I was defective. She had an angry, a terrible anger in her voice. And she just, you get on out of this. And so the Lord showed me how damaging that was. And he showed me how uh, when that happened in my life, I needed affirmation. I needed to know that I wasn't defective. And so in my life, my pursuit, I ain't lose nobody. In life, and ambition and everything, had everything to do with my wanting to feel good about me and wanting others to feel good about me. Are you with me? Now, I, I didn't have the capacity to understand my motivation at the time. But it still happened whether I understood it or not, right? Because the need was there. I needed to be affirmed because somebody just simply crushed my spirit as a little boy. Now, I, as a nine-year-old, as a child, I didn't have the ability to reason and say, well, obviously she had some problem. She didn't have the sense enough to handle it in another way. I didn't have that kind of reason. So anger set in. All right. So... And he was showing, with, showing me how that happened. Fear set in, then fear of getting too close. And when people b become like uh, tough or harsh in their tone, it made me not want to get close to them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But when God made me understand the root causes of certain attitudes that was there, and it's like he said, but when you come to me, and a lot of those he's healed. But when you come to me, and I heal you of those things, now the sting and the pain is no longer there. But you can't stop there, because there are some reasonings and attitudes surrounding all of that pain. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So now, he said, it's up to you. I've set you free. So now I had to... I saw your 